Good morning. Once again, this is Monday, May the 4th, and we looked at Romans a little earlier, and now we're going to look in Revelations. And if you'll take your Bibles and turn to Revelation, uh, we are on ch chapter 8 of Revelations. We've already talked about the beginning of the opening of the seals uh, of the scroll by the Lamb and the things to come. And as we look at chapter 8, we're going to begin to see some of the judgments that come out of these uh, opening of the seals. So let's begin with prayer. Father, we once again come to you thankful that we can read your word and hear your word and be blessed. I pray that you'd give us wisdom and understanding. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us and bring things together in our heart and mind as we look at this book. Bless us this day in such a way, and may you be glorified in it. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look into the book of Revelation today in chapter 8, in verse 1, we begin by seeing a holy hush. You know, it's hard for some of us to be quiet. Uh, our world today is full of people that can't sit still. They can. They've just never disciplined themselves to do such a thing. And they've never uh, learned to sit still. It's not natural for us. And yet we can learn the art of solitude and stillness. And so in heaven we see a holy hush. And it says in verse 1, When the Lamb opened the seventh seal okay, of the scroll, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Uh, 30 seconds is a long time to be quiet and sit still for a lot of us. But a half hour of doing nothing, not moving, not stirring, not speaking, just sitting in the presence of God. We ought to try it sometime, you know. We might learn more about our God that we claim to love and to know. In verse 2, we begin to see the answers to prayers. It says, Then I saw the angel, seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer. Golden censers were used to carry incense to uh, represent prayers. And he was given much incense to offer, to burn before the Lord. Uh, and with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. So he was given a censer. He was given incense to burn on the altar with the prayers uh, of the saints before the throne. And so he, he here has incense, uh, sweet-smelling aroma to God. He has the prayers of saints to mix with that as it rises up to God to his attention, and he offers these on the altar, burning them before the Lord. And it says, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. So he is worshiping God by offering on the altar our prayers with incense. It says, And then the angel took the censer that he's holding in his hand and filled it with fire from the altar. Now, the altar is burning the incense and our prayers, okay? It's being offered before God, and he fills the uh, censer with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth, okay? And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Now, you remember earlier we talked about thunder and lightning and how it represented judgment. So he's offering up all these prayers to God. They're going to be answered. And it's, it's rising up to God. And at the same time, he throws down judgment upon the earth. We pray a lot for spiritual awakening. We pray a lot for people to be saved. We pray a lot for our world to be straightened out and God to heal our land. Ultimately, the healing will come when the evil is removed. And if we won't repent and remove it ourselves, one day God will remove it and will establish a new heaven and a new earth. 
And this is the beginnings of that here in this time of judgment in Revelation. In verse 6, it says, Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up. Talking about vegetation, it says, And a third of the trees were burned up, and all gr green grass was burned up. A third of all the vegetation on the earth will be burned up with the first trumpet sound. That's a lot. That affects our oxygen supply. That affects a lot of things. That affects habitats for animals. Uh, and so a third is gone. Now, we can question all day what a third means, but that's a lot. Let's just leave it at that. That's a lot of the vegetation of the earth gone. The second angel blew his trumpet and something like a great mountain, probably a meteor, burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Now some people look at this and say, oh, that just means that all the live animals that died, their blood and uh, decaying bodies get mixed into the water and all. Uh, scripture tells us that God turned the Nile into blood. And he can do this again. It says uh, a third of the living creatures. Now, a third of all the oceans turned blood. That's a lot of water. A lot of water. And in this, a third of the living creatures of the sea died because of this. And a third of all the ships out on the ocean were destroyed. Pray for the sailors the men and women who are out on the seas, because if this happens while they're out there, their ships, a third of the ships out there are going to be destroyed. So we see here the second trumpet, and once again, the loss of resources and the loss of life here on earth. It says in verse 10, the third angel blew in his trumpet and a great star fell from heaven. Once again, an probably a meteorite, we're not sure, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. Now, this is important. You say, well, the, the second trumpet brought this mountain that fell on a third of the oceans. Isn't that enough? We can't drink salt water, right? Now fresh water, a third of all the fresh water on the earth is gone. There's drought around this world. We, we give money to missions to build drill wells so people can have clean water, fresh water. There are people who, who walk for miles and maybe days to get a bucket of water to carry back home to their family. Now on the earth, and a third of all that fresh water is gone with the third trumpet. God is putting us in a place where only he is responsible for this. I mean, nobody else can do this. Man can't imagine this. Not to this magnitude. And we think this pandemic is pretty bad. Just wait till God's time comes. It says, the name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood. And this is just is bitterness. And many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. Many people die here because they drink the water. It's just like if you go out on the ocean today and you drink salt water, you know, you're eventually going to kill yourself if you drink enough of it. And here they're drinking this bitter water and they begin to die because of it. It says in verse 12, And the fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck. Now, I don't know how this looks visibly, but the sun diminishes in its light and strength and heat okay be a colder time and a third of the moon and a third of the stars were struck it's going to be a darker time physically a darker time uh, we won't be able to see as much as we see now so that a third of their light may be darkened and a third of the day might be kept from shining and likewise a third of the night once again, we can debate all day about what a third means, but it's just a bad time. 
when God's judgment comes on this earth, it's going to be a bad time for humans, for wildlife, for earth, all the way around. Uh, we need to be prepared to meet our God. We need to have a humble heart of repentance to meet our God. You say God is mean, he's unjust. He lovingly has waited for centuries for mankind to turn to him. Lovingly waited. And even during the tribulation period when all this has happened, he's waiting for repentance. Because if we look throughout Revelation, we'll see that men know who's doing this, where it comes from, whose hand is behind it, and they refuse to repent. In verse 13, we see, Then I looked and heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow. You see, this is just the beginning. The first four angels have blown their trumpets. There's three more to come. And he says, woe, because of the next three. We think the first four were bad. Wait till the next three are blown. You see, God will do whatever it takes to draw men to himself to repentance. And if it takes this harshness for us to come to a point where we look up to God and humble ourselves and cry out to him, He'll do it. We were talking this last week in our staff meeting about dangerous prayers. It's a dangerous prayer to tell God, do whatever it takes to save a loved one, to save a co-worker, to say to God, do whatever it takes, in a way is dangerous because God will bring us to the end of ourselves if possibly we would turn to him what love he has for us, that he patiently works and waits. Don't waste his love and don't waste the time of his patience with living in sin. Repent today and believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of the universe and all mankind, and be blessed.